Hey guys, it's Sam and today I'm going to be wrapping up some of the witchy books that I've read in the last handful of months. I'm also being joined by Tally. I hope that she doesn't bark during this a ton because that requires a ton of editing from me. I'm slowly losing daylight so I'm gonna try to finish all that before we lose the sun. But I do try to read about one witchcraft related book a month and by witchcraft it's not always like craft related books. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's like astrology, sometimes it's more tarot, and I have a mix of those here that I do want to talk about. I decided that I wanted to do this more in a wrap-up style because I do know that not everyone is looking for individual book reviews of witchy books and getting them all in one go might be a little bit easier for people. If you do want a full review on any of these, comment down below and let me know because I can do that. And all of these are fairly popular witch books and like almost closer to the mainstream so hopefully you'll get some good info if you want to check these out for yourself. Let's get into it. So the first book is Psychic Witch by Matt Oren. This is a book that is super popular and that goes around a lot for beginners books and I actually haven't finished this but I still have read enough of it to give a review for it in my opinion. This is packed with information. This is much more than even just like psychic witchcraft although that is something that pops up where Matt Oren says you know like everyone has psychic abilities of some kind and you want to tap into that but there are so many exercises. Let me go through and see if I can find like exactly how many exercises there are in here. 84, 88, 90, 93, 93. So there's 93 exercises that you can do in here. So basically every chapter is just like chock full of exercises. So what that means is, is it good for beginners? Technically, yes, but I would say this is more of an intermediate book. So even myself who is like a beginner but gets into some of the more intermediate reads sometimes, this was a lot and I actually want to take the time to devote to be able to do all the exercises and I haven't had that time yet. So I've put it aside a little bit to be like possibly after I move to get back into this and do all the exercises like one a day possibly and work my way through it. What is kind of challenging for me is a lot of these are like meditation type exercises and more like mental exercises and I can't be sitting there reading the book while I'm doing it so I almost might actually also get the audiobook so I can hear him like explain the exercise as I'm doing it. I wish there was like a guide that you could get with this like you could download if you got the book like guided meditations like these guided exercises so that you could listen to them while you're doing these meditations because that would be so much easier the first few times that you do these exercises because you can do them over and over again but the first few times to just get a grasp on what you're supposed to be doing without having to like open your eyes read the book kind of like get out of that headspace and all that so do I think this is great and worth all the hype that it gets yes but is this beginner I don't know I think that's going to be like super overwhelming for most beginners and there are other beginner books that I would probably recommend first to like dip your toes in before getting to this more like intense practice type stuff but I'm looking forward to finishing this and I do think it's really awesome. Then we have Modern Tarot by Michelle T. This is a interesting compilation of tarot descriptions and how to read, not necessarily how to read tarot, but more it goes through every single tarot card. And they actually use like this this deck, which is a, it's based on Rider Waite, but it is like a little different, more like inclusive and all of this. And those are the cards they use to make their comparisons. And this, is, this says right here it can be used with any deck. And what's really cool about this is it's a combination of guides to the different tarot cards, Michelle T's own sort of like memoir moments of like here's when she had these moments in her life, etc, etc. And then also like spells and things to connect to those cards. So I think this is a great beginner book as well as like intermediate. Really anybody I think could benefit from this. But I will say that if you're not witchy if you're not like a practicing like a practitioner of any kind or not interested in any of that some of this won't be as valuable to you because you're just going to get the guide stuff and I think you can get the guide stuff in other books what's cool is these little how to be you know how to embrace this energy so for example I just opened to the ten of wands so at the back of the ten of wands chapter it's saying how to stop being the ten of wands so like maybe what rituals to kind of do to get out of that headspace um, how to make certain like crystals which crystals might be like beneficial for helping different candle spells things like that and every single one has like different things you can do to sort of like how to embody this card if it's a good card how to get through it if it's a like bad card all those kinds of things which I think is going to be super helpful if you are more of a practitioner but if you're just looking at this for tarot insights probably not quite as valuable but I would say that this does um, help you to sort of like intuitively read as well um, but as far as a like complete guide to reading the tarot no that's not what this is but I don't really think that this like 
says that's what it is. You know, it says connecting with your higher self through the wisdom of the cards. Um, it's giving you more like how to do not quite shadow work, but like how to connect with elements of yourself through this. So I think that if you are into tarot for spiritual reasons or like psychological reasons, that could work for both. Um, but yeah, just if you maybe like go and flip through this at a store once that's an option for you to see if the exercises and things um, speak to you because otherwise I think it's just like a guidebook not quite as valuable. But I do feel like I pull this out a lot when I am reading tarot cards now to um, kind of see what this book says in addition because it sort of has like some new twists on things and if I get a card that particularly resonates I will look it up in here to see if there's anything that like I can do to sort of embody that card. So I would say I'd give this like four out of five stars. Then we have a book that I actually ended up DNFing and that is Moon Magic by Diane Alquist and this is an author that actually has another book that is I think slightly older than this one called Moon Spells that is pretty popular. This book though was not what I was expecting. We were reading it um, kind of doing a buddy read in the witchy discord that I have and all of us were kind of like eh not really liking the vibe of this. So this was a couple months ago that I was trying to read this and she just had a lot of information in here that wasn't moon magic at the beginning. I think that's what really threw me off. Like I was going into this being like, okay, I want like a specialized book on moon magic. And she was going into all this other like sort of beginner stuff, but then was using some language from what I remember that was like very, uh, like this very much felt more like a beginner witchcraft book than an actual moon magic book. Like she went into a lot of stuff about like sort of what you see in a lot of beginner um, broad witchcraft books about um, sort of like a little bit of the history and other th I think she like I think the thing that really threw me off I want to say that she went into like chakras and stuff and I'm like why are you talking about chakras like not and not in a way that related to like the moon it was just like she included a lot of things that I'm like I really don't feel like you're staying in your lane and I want to say also that she included some language that was a little bit more like um, older traditional as far as um, maybe like gender and stuff that was just kind of like add to me because a lot of the books I've been reading recently are very like inclusive of different like genders and gender expressions and not necessarily using like the gender binary and I kind of feel like it's, it's been a little while but I kind of feel like that's what she maybe was doing too so I'm not opposed to reading moon spells because I've heard like across the board really good feedback about moon spells but moon magic not so much and there's other moon magic books that I do plan on reading that will hopefully be more specialized and not trying to be a jack-of-all-trades book when you're trying to get it specifically for moon magic. I then read Year of the Witch by Temperance Alden. This has been a book that's gotten pretty popular just around the internet spaces. I've seen that on TikTok and things too because um, Temperance Alden is more I think active in like online like witchy spaces but this is a book that is about the Wheel of the Year which is traditionally a Wiccan idea and Temperance talks about like the history of the Wheel of the Year, how people practice, um, all the different holidays that you see on the Wheel of the Year, Samhain, Yule, Imbolc, Ostera, all, all of those that you see in the traditional Wheel of the Year, and then also how she formed her own Wheel of the Year that was based around like what actually worked for her because a lot of times some of these holidays don't appeal to all of us um, because they were honestly podgepodge together by Gerald Gardner using some of the Celtic fire festivals um, just kind of thrown together in a way that might not be something that resonates with a lot of people. So she talks about looking at the weather and like the vegetation in your local area to sort of make um, celebrations around seasons and stuff. Um, certain holidays or things that might appeal to you based on your practice or based on your upbringing or whatever to sort of make your own wheel of the year. So it talks a lot about that. That is a very small part of it though. I would say that there's a lot of different sort of, um, a little bit of like beginner stuff. Not as much as the other books that I've talked about where I'm like, why are we going into this? But sort of like intuitive witchcraft, um, sort of what it means to be a witch, how witches embrace sort of like cycles and, and things like death and rebirth, and then goes into like local spirits and things to potentially work with an element. So the beginner information that she has in here is still relevant to like the Wheel of the Year as far as like, working with the elements in your particular area, working with the spirits in your particular area, um, things like that, and then goes into a little bit of history. Um, she has little chapters on each holiday and when they typically are, and sort of the background, um, what different cultures might have like done with this holiday and things like that, and maybe what you want to do to celebrate. She has like little rituals in there too, not a complete guide again, but a nice little book to kind of go over how to um, be more intuitive with your um, practice of holidays and all of that. So this is a book that was really fun for me to read. One, it's, it's very easy to read, but also I keep wanting to celebrate the like Sabbaths and I typically don't. Like I have put so much pressure on them. Um, I think also because right now, um, as of the filming of this video, I'm living at home. Um, that will change in the next month or so, but 
for the last year when I've gotten into my uh, witchcraft journey, I've been living at home and, and, and not that like, like my parents and I don't talk about like my practice or anything, but I just don't feel super comfortable necessarily like doing it. I wouldn't say I'm like in the broom closet, but I'm also like not completely out, if that makes sense, I would say. Um, so I would rather have like my own space if I was gonna sort of like celebrate and like, I keep putting all these holidays on this pedestal of like, oh, I want it to be like cool as like my first like real celebration. So typically speaking, I've been celebrating the holidays since, when did I start? Beltane or Astera, I wanna say, of last year. Um, I think Beltane. Maybe it was the one after Beltane. I'm not sure. I remember. I definitely remember like seeing stuff about Beltane because I was I was already getting into it at that point. So I typically do divination that day. Like I'll do a tarot card spread um, for the holiday and things like that, and sort of like this next season of life. Um, but I haven't done anything else. So um, this kind of made me want to get into it again, not put too much pressure on it, and even potentially like build my own wheel depending on um, what I resonate with more. Because there are definitely certain holidays on the wheel of the year that I'm less inclined towards and certain ones that I do really like. So this was helpful. I would say again, another four out of five star read. And the last book that I finished was The Complete Guide to Astrology by Louise Eddington. And as with most like complete guides, this is not a complete guide. Um, this is like obviously not very big. If you were making a complete guide to astrology, it would be chonky. But I would say this is a pretty decent beginner to beginner intermediate book. And I would say I would fall in the like beginner intermediate section of astrology. I use the app Time Passages, which is, gets pretty detailed. I go on like astro.com and do charts and things like that. So I know some of the like basic things, all of the houses, all of the planets, um, that kind of stuff. I am much better about the planets and the like houses and um, the zodiacs that are in my chart, obviously, more so than others, so this included sort of everything. Um, and that's sort of what I wanted to get a little bit more of, and just a little more insight even into my own chart with this book. So this goes into the planets, um, the zodiac signs, the houses, um, some stuff about like aspects, and some other like more minor um, planets and like, um, not not planets because they're not all planets, but like uh, things in space. I can't think of some of the things that it would be, like comets and asteroids and things like that. Um, and then also goes into um, sun signs and rising signs, but does a good job of saying that um, your chart is not just one piece. Um, these are some more prominent pieces, but you have to look at like a whole chart. Um, and then also goes into, I believe, sun signs mostly. Um, at work and in love, but again saying that you really did look at more of like the whole chart. But I will say, but because of that, and emphasizing that like you need more stuff um, to look at for some of these things, I'm kind of like, well, why didn't you include that? You know, like I, I do want more of that like chunky guide to like, okay, how can I really like read my whole chart and how things interact? Because that's the thing, like the more I get into astrology, the more I'm like, there's so much more than just even like where your Venus is, but it's not even just that, it's also how that interacts and like the aspects to other planets and stuff that I want that um, additional piece. And this gave me more insight into that additional piece, but didn't give me the information, right? Like it told me I needed that additional information, but didn't give it to me. So I think this is, like I said, really good for people who are like complete beginners. I also really like this author's take on, again, the binary of gender, because in a lot of astrology, it's like they're, they're sort of like male and masculine and female and feminine and whatever. And in this book, the author has a whole forward about like, I'm not going to do that. I don't think it's a binary. You have each of these representations and every person has like both and so she uses day and night energy and inhale and exhale energy for um, substitutions for like masculine and feminine in a way that's much more like non-binary and also is really good about being like traditionally in this culture it's more this energy and then this culture is this energy so it's just really inclusive and I've seen that a lot more in witchy books that I have been reading so I like this. I would say it's like a solid 3.5 probably. Very easy to read, very easy to get through it. I did get some guidance on some additional things I wanted to look into, um, such as different, more minor, um, again, like things in space, like um, asteroids and things that are part of my chart that I want to look into more. And different, she pointed out some different um, spots in a chart that I wasn't as familiar with, like the um, 
something of fortune and um, like the nodes and stuff. So again, like beginner to beginner intermediate and it's definitely going to give you more insight into other things you might want to look into in the future with other books. So still like this, but not a complete guide by any means. And that is it for all of the witchy books that I have read recently. So comment them below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you've thought of them. And if based on the books that I just read, if there's any that you really would recommend to me, let me know. I've done a few other reviews on this channel um, for other books as far as I've read some of the Laura Tempest Sackroft books, Aaron Murphy Hiscock books, I want to read some more of those. I haven't gotten into like any of the traditional like Wicca authors like Scott Cunningham and stuff, I might eventually, but again I'm more of a secular traditional witch, um, so not necessarily into some of the more like classic Wiccan reads. There's a lot more newer books that I'm more interested in, but if you have any recommendations based on what I liked, definitely let me know. And let me know if you like this, if this little wrap-up style is good, or if you would prefer more individual reviews on these books. But anyway, I will see you all soon. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye!